Hi everyone, welcome to week three. And the title that I have for us this week is What Clients Don't Know About Design. Uh, that title is derived from our extra credit this week, so I hope you guys will get to check that out. And then, but the main things that we're going to be doing this week is working with colors and uh, doing some stuff with CSS. Um, the stuff with CSS, depending on your background um, from the other co op classes that you've taken, may be review. Um, so I'm just, if anything, just kind of review the material and feel free to skip the Linda videos that I have listed in terms of CSS that I'll discuss this week. Um, but anyways, definitely we're all going to be working with, with colors. Um, as you know, uh, I'm your instructor for this course. Please feel free to ask me any questions that you have um, from this week and or previous weeks. I want to make sure that everyone knows exactly what's, this, exactly what's expected of them. Um, one of the key things that I do have for us to do this week is basically this little check-in assignment. Um, it's non-graded, so feel free to skip it if, if you feel like you don't need to do it. But it's just an opportunity for me to check in with you about how things have been going in the course. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, this week I wanted to start off with an image and a, um, a saying that I like to say. Uh, if you take classes with me in the classroom, you've probably heard me say this before, but... I want to make sure that we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, what do I mean by that? Well, I, I give a pretty good explanation of it within the course, but basically I want to make sure that we don't throw out um, what we did when you took Co-op 2150, which is basically the planning and uh, all the planning and analysis that you did for, for the creation of your documentation. Because um, now we're at we finally got to week three. We finally got to the fun part of the course where we finally get to be designing and developing some things. So when I say things like don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, what I mean is everything that we've done up to this point is the foundation for what we now go do in the web development life cycle. So when you're designing something, it's based on what you've planned and what you've analyzed. When you're developing something, it's still based on what you've planned and what you've analyzed. For example, What's the purpose of the website? Everybody's purposes are going to be, as we know, everybody's purposes for their websites are different because we're not all kind of working on the same website. Many people in this class are, 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 making, are working on very different websites. What's the overall purpose of it? And then figure out what that purpose is and figure out how you can use that information to leverage what you're designing and developing in your site. It's very important for you to understand the purpose and the goals of the site and then everything that you're doing in the site in terms of design and development is based on that analysis, based on that planning. Very important. And if you ever design and develop something that's not aligned with the purpose of the site, not aligned with the goals of the site, potentially what you were doing is you're actually distracting your users. Um, as we talked about last a little bit last week, Anything that's on the site that uh, is distracting, you know, users are just going to think of it as an advertisement. So a user's experience should always be effortless. These users represented here, yes, they are 1990 sitcom characters, but they know exactly where certain things are supposed to be on the sites that they're going. And if essentially there's something there that's out of place or something that they weren't expecting, it's distracting. In their mind, it could be just an advertisement. They're not even going to look at it. Or maybe they're going to hit the back button. And go somewhere else. So it's important for us to know our users. It's important for us to make sure that they have an effortless experience. And like I was saying, everything that we we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Everything that we've done up to this point is very important for when we finally get to be designing and developing our sites. Um, so no, please, please, please know your users. So put yourself in their shoes. Really think through what you're trying to design and develop. Um, and make sure that it's all everything is aligned with the purpose and goals. I know I would keep saying this over and over, but it's so it's such such an important thing. Whether it's a horizontal navigation bar, what buttons in the drop down bar, where they're located, what things are found on the home page, is it on every page, how the user gets back up to the top of the page, you know, all these little simple things in terms of functionality are very important and all of those decisions are made based on the planning and analysis. Colors of the site, visual design of the site, um, how the site looks, all of that should all be based on the planning and analysis of the website. Very, very important. So please, please, please know your user, know this, the purpose and the goals of the site. 
Let's do a quick little review from last week. Um, we talked about how important it was for all of us to have a solid understanding of how the web works. You guys have been learning this solid, you guys have been getting the solid foundation of how the web works um, from all of your other co-op classes and now you kind of get to this capstone course and I just want to make sure that we reiterate, reiterate things is we need to make sure that we understand who we're trying to reach which is of course what we just discussed in a second ago which was the users but we also need to be um, just still continuing to wrap our, our minds around the technology involved in creating a website and we talked about that last week and the differences of graphic design and web design and how for example like when we create images those images aren't actually static on the page like a graphic design because our users are going to be able to experience our our images that we have on our site in very different ways with very different browsers very different um, devices things like that um, so any, anyways uh, I just just to move forward I just want to make sure that we again finally this is last you know last time to review all this is what what is what is web design let's make sure we have a firm understanding of that as so that we can move forward um, so what is it that we actually design um, what think about that what is it that we actually design Are redesigning the device no not necessarily um, what is it that we actually design well I'll tell you what we don't design first is I want to make sure you guys know and I repeat make sure that you know this that a web designer does not design the content now granted for this class yes it is a simulation so the content that you're dumping into your sites, I'm guessing, unless you're actually designing a site for the place that you work, which I've had many places students that do that, or maybe you're designing a site for yourself, that's fine. But generally speaking, a web designer never, 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 never designs the content. If you're working for Amazon and you decide to tweak their terms of use page or their copyright page, I guarantee you, you're going to get fired because they specifically have that stuff written out and they work with lawyers to write that type of stuff out. Definitely don't be tweaking anything. You do not touch the content okay you design what is it what we do is we design we take that content that raw content those texts those images that audio that video and what is it that we do we actually take all of that content and we visually design it with XHTML and CSS on the very basic terms um, or, or other types of, of script languages and things like that that's what we do and we make sure that those are you know what are these designs for you know, we have all these designs. What are they for? What do they work on? Well, we talked about that last week. These designs are to be viewed perhaps on a computer, laptop, tablet, phone, printer, smartphone, or even in the future, you know, Google, it, Google's coming out with this thing called Google Glass. Check it out. You know, I mean, eventually that might be the new thing. We're all going to be viewing our websites through within our glasses as we're walking around the street, you know. Um, but these devices and things are always changing. I mean, other things that we could have on here are perhaps, uh, you know, television screens because people are, are viewing the internet now on their television screens in their, in their living rooms or maybe on their gaming device, things like that. Okay, so just to recap, think about it. Uh, what is it that we design? We design, we take their raw content and then we design functionality and we design, visually design it using XHTML and CSS to be then put on these different dev devices. Um, just, as a, just as another example, what are these designs for? Uh, these, these three different devices. And then here's an example of what the web page might like. You notice here this uh, welcome to Oink and Moo Barbecue. This, this, this website needs to be responsive based on these different devices that you're found on. That, that would be our ultimate goal. Not truly the focus of this course, but although many students do go this route, but I mean you would basically have a different style sheet for that would call up based on the different devices. Now we, when we do um, next week, we are going to be dabbling into having different style sheets for different browsers, but essentially the overall goal mainly, because these days browsers are very similar. They weren't in the past, but they are now, but in the future we do need to be selective, have selective style sheets for the different devices that you view it on to make sure that they have a good experience. Because we don't, like for example, this, you know, welcome to Oink and Moo Barbecue here in this large screen. Imagine if that was just the, it viewed the exact same way on the phone and then the user's having to push the site around to get to what it's trying to find. When you think about it, think about your users. Remember we just talked about this a second ago. What does a user need when they're on welcome to Oink and Moo Barbecue? on their phone. What is it they would actually need? 
Or maybe here's an example of Starbucks. Look over there on the far left, on the far right hand side. That's just an example of what the output of uh, the mobile browser is going to be putting. Think about, you know, a mobile user, what do they really need when they go to the Starbucks site? So that's where it comes in. We need to wrap, we really wrap our heads around what our users really need to make sure that we're giving them the best experience and then having responsive designs to our site to make sure that they can have that. So all user experiences that would be the ultimate goal I'm not expecting you to be having sites for this for this course that are that responsive although I have had students in the past that try to jump into some of that stuff and that's great because we do want to be we do want these sites that you guys are creating to be a professional piece for your portfolio so if you have experience in those areas definitely try it out but ultimately broad picture we're throwing a wide net out here all of our designs ideally would be responsive and usable for all users and all users experiences all devices stuff like that so how do these designs function because remember there's a very big difference between the visual design of the site and the functional design of the site um, so now let's discuss you know just particularly how these design functions you saw these images last week in terms of we have different types of websites whether it's a portal news informational business marketing blog wiki or even other sites like social networking, educational, entertainment, advocacy, web app, content aggregator, personal. You guys all know, in a, as a user, what you're expecting when you go to these types of sites. So if you ever go to a social networking site and it doesn't feel like a social networking site, you're not going to think it's a social networking site, so you're going to, in a sense, make valuations about the content of the site valuations of whether it's even the site that you're looking for or not, you're going to hit the back button and go somewhere else. So that's why it was very important for us earlier on in the course where we all kind of had to determine what type of site um, the sites were that we were making. And then it's your goal then to make a site that's comparable within that type of site. Because if you have something that's just totally, uh, it doesn't feel like a uh, a personal website or it doesn't feel like an educational website then your user is going to think something's wrong and they're going to leave and find a site that more suits their needs based on how they they're expecting the site to be and again like I've said before the user's experience should always be effortless very 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 important so when I said how do these designs function well they basically function as these different types of websites and then remember the content is what the user needs. We saw this last week. Content is what the user needs. That's why they're going to your site. The design is what the user sees. Okay, that's the visual design of the site. And then the functional design of the site. That's what the user actually does. That's how they go from A to B. That's how they actually get to the content that they want. And when we do it right, the, the happy face is just to symbolize that's what the user is he would be happy. They have an effortless experience, effortless experience. They're able to complete the three tasks that they set aside to want to complete. And also when all of these things are aligned, um, the client essentially, if the site is designed right, if the functionality of the site is right as well, the client would then essentially be able to accomplish their goals as well. They would, they would hope if the goals are actually feasible. So let's just talk a little bit as you, as, I mean, this is very basic stuff, but make sure you know, when I talk about design, I'm talking about layout, colors, images, okay? Front end, both of these are actually front end. So this is what, and, and honestly, the visual design of the site really is probably what, at first glance, is what the users really care about. It's, especially when you show this, your site's design to the, to the client. You know, this is the first thing that they're gonna, that they're gonna be critiquing, and this is the first thing that they're gonna see and, and, and make decisions on. If they get to a site and the background is lying green, what are the, what are the, they're going to notice that first before they notice anything else, okay? So the visual design is very, 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 very important. You know, um, and then functionality, the user might not really know this until they can't get to what they're trying to get to. So when we talk about functionality, user's experience, navigation, forms, you know, the whole user, so much we can say about users. How does the user get back to the top of the page? How does the user get to the home page? How do the user get to the pages that they're expecting to go to? Things like that. So very important to understand because this is really where the, the whole, this is where a web designer is. This is the two things that we are working on. You know, some web designers focus more on the visual design, some focus more on the functionality, but generally speaking, a web designer should have tools in all of these different areas. And the tool that we're going to be using this week in terms of visual design is going to be Adobe Cooler. 
If you've had classes with me in the past, you've used Adobe Cooler. If you haven't had classes with me before, you're going to, it's going to take just a little bit, but you're going to have a, fun, a whole lot of fun with Adobe Cooler. Um, I have set aside some Linda videos for those of you who don't have a background in Adobe Cooler. Make sure that you check those out to get you into the tool. But basically, it's just this free web app that is created by Adobe um, that's fully accessible online. You can create an account, and you can basically, what, the goal of this week would be to actually take an image that you're wanting to use for your website. Okay, you take this image that you're wanting to use, you upload it into Adobe Cooler, and then it's going to generate a custom color palette for your site based on that one image. So just envision this image being maybe a key image in your slideshow that you have on the home page, or just an image that you have on the home page, or maybe it's the logo that you are going to have on the home page. If you have this logo that is you know has you know subtle grays and reds and maroons and it's this and then you then the whole rest of your site has nothing that looks even remotely close to that it's going to look off and it's going to look out of place so I'm guessing your images that I'm probably thinking of that you're probably using is probably more like a bitmap image that has lots of colors and you're going to put that bitmap image up into cooler and it's going to generate a custom color palette that you could then use to stylize your background stylize your heading stylize different backgrounds of uh, sections of your of your site with through the use of divs, the, the color of your text, all of those types of things can all be used. And the cool thing about Cooler is it's going to generate those colors for you so that everything's going to complement and give, you can give your users an overall theme. And then like I said, you're going to be doing all of that in external CSS. The power of external CSS, I have this image here not because I like Mustangs, but the power of external CSS is because it's going to allow us to have a style sheet for the for, for, for one um, website and then essentially you could make changes to that and then you change the whole visual design of the site to be looking I mean it's still the same content it's still a Mustang but now the visual design has essentially changed with and you can make all of those changes in one spot and it's very common for sites to go through updates where they are going to have to update the visual design instead of updating the visual design on every single page and imagine if Amazon you had to update it had to update their site and you essentially had to touch every single page on Amazon's website. How terrible would that be? You would quit. Uh, so, I mean, but if you design your external style sheet well, I mean, now granted, Amazon, I think last time I checked, had like seven different style sheets. But if you design those style sheets well, you basically could make the change one time and it would take the changes site-wide. So that's the power of external CSS. Your term projects, as I would hope with other classes you've had in Coop, do require you to use an external CSS style sheet. And again, next week when we get into the midterm, we're going to be doing more with external CSS, uh, especially in terms of, like I said earlier, with designing sites for different browsers. So uh, you're basically going to have an external CSS that's going to be used for Internet Explorer, and then you're going to have an external CSS that's used for any other browser that the user goes into. So they're going to get a customized, uh, this is all in the midterm next week, they're going to get a basically a customized visual design of the site when they're in IE and then as soon as they go into any other browser they're going to get a completely different look and feel and we'll talk more about that next week but your book's going to help you set up all that and I'm going to have a video and different things to set you up to do those things as well but anyways we use external CSS not just for color but also for structure and layout when this image here is just to represent just a centered one column layout very common especially for simpler informational websites. There's different types of layout that works well with different types of you know sites. We showed all those examples of sites earlier. Um, but basically through the use of external CSS you would control your entire layout of your site with basically um, contextual or class contextual classes or, or uh, uh, IDs that would basically um, control the visual design and the layout of your site based on these different areas whether it's uh, whether it's a sidebar whether it's main header footer etc all of it in a sense is all wrapped in the container you guys all learned this in previous classes but I just want to make sure to reiterate and all of that's controlled with the external style sheet um, but in terms of you know remember this is design principles too so I mean think about uh, the nature of the user expecting these different types of layouts are they expecting a maybe a right sidebar left sidebar with main content maybe they're expecting a header and a footer 
Um, very common design is to have, you know, uh, navigation over on the left side and this left sidebar with a header and a footer and then the main content over kind of in the middle or then just, you know, of course this basically has everything, right? Um, header, footer, right sidebar, left sidebar, main content area. Not, not every site necessarily needs to be this complex, but again, all of that's going to be controlled with uh, external uh, style sheet, of course. Now I have, it's very rare, but I do have students that come into this course still designing sites with tables. And not to offend anybody, but essentially tables <laughs> are stupid. Uh, uh, tables is what we definitely used back in the 90s when I was when I was starting out as a web designer I was designing sites and tables but to make sure that our sites are as responsive as possible we need when I say responsive I mean responsive for devices and browsers we need to make sure that our sizes are, are I'm sorry make sure our sites are responsive and to do that the best thing to do is don't put them in tables please so I have a really fun resource that I would like everybody in the class to read if you haven't read it with in other in other classes that you've had with me but it has lots of fun graphics like this one and it's going to talk to you exactly why tables are stupid and it's going to get you into a discussion of the use of, of divs or if you have HTML5 the use of um, semantic areas but basically a table should only be used for tabular data so if you I mean if you have a table in your site that you're using for this course yes uh, that table should be including data that the user would search through and it should be organized within a table. That is fine, but not in terms of layout. Um, so it, if you have the HTML5 class, feel free to use your semantic elements such as, you know, section, aside, nav, footer. If you haven't had the, ex uh, if you haven't had the style sheet class, you do not need to be creating your site in, in HTML. If you, if you haven't had the HTML5 class, you don't need to be using HTML5. But I would suggest if you if you're ready to start dabbling in it, feel free. Most of us in the class are just going to be using divs, and they're going to be giving it a class called, you know, section, footer, nav, things like that. So I'd like to now give you an overview of the of the activities that we're doing this week, and then I'm going to talk discuss about the main ones uh, in depth. Uh, first thing is we're supposed to be reading uh, chapters eight and nine from our book. This is going to get into uh, just some cool things that we could do with CSS, hence the title, CSS Uberzone. So enjoy that. Um, and then design for the non-designer, that's going to prepare us for our midterm uh, next week, which was what I was kind of discussing a little bit earlier. Um, and then I do have suggested Linda videos for us to watch. I'm going to present those here in, in the next two slides. Um, but basically, you know, always feel free to pick and choose what you, you're learning on Linda, especially when it comes to the assignment this week, which is the pair discussion. I'm going to be setting up a spot for everyone to work with a partner in the course. Basically, the, very simple. All you're doing is uh, is telling your partner which two elements, that uh, minimum two elements that you're trying to work on for your site this week in terms of the ones that you shared with the class the previous week. But uh, after telling him, what, him or her what those elements are, then you then let them know where you're, what resources you're using f to, to build those elements. Um, and a great place to get those resources would be through the use of Linda because um, that's a great uh, demonstrational aspect of the course, which is often demonstrational aspects of courses are often not found in online courses. So I'm hoping to instill you guys using that with the Linda videos. Um, so please at least give them a little bit of your time going into them and checking them or finding ones that you want to uh, watch for your own individual learning needs this week, especially with that pair discussion as you uh, start finally designing and developing the site. And this is what you're going to be doing between uh, f f from weeks three through seven of the course essentially and then we do have uh, another quiz this week and then I also like I said there's this check-in assignment uh, it's non graded um, so if you feel like you don't need to check in with me feel free to, to not turn it in but just just it's just basically a great way for you for me to be able to check in with everyone and uh, in a personal way and, and, and I, they can kind of check in with me to let me know you know how things are going on in the course and then I will respond to that and give you feedback on what you ask or or different comments that you have about the course and then the extra credit of course hence the title of this week what our clients don't know <laughs> and why it's your fault um, so as you're you know some of you guys it's rare that I have people in the class that I do have real clients maybe some of you do but basically um, it's important for us all to it's which why we're kind of in the simulated experience that we are working with clients but it's important for us all to 
to really truly know what our clients don't know and, and why it's our fault and then so be sure to watch that video uh, even if you're not doing the extra credit just give give it a quick little watch or, or, or at least bookmark it for later to watch and I'm hoping that someone's gonna volunteer to do the extra credit this week which is basically doing an executive summary of, of what that resource shows and then asking the class an engaging discussion question or, or at least somehow figuring out to ask them a question that would then draw people in the class to go in and watch the video. But again, that's extra credit and not required. Now let's take a look at those Linda resources that I was mentioning earlier. Um, so the first one that I think a lot of you may need to watch is, is definitely the Cooler Essential Training uh, by Morty Golding. Um, you could, I mean, the tool really is very user friendly. You could probably get in and fumble around the tool and definitely get dirty with it and, and figure it out. Um, but if you need the, the resources, they're listed here. Um, um, well, I mean, especially for the, the aspect of putting an image into it and getting the color palette, that's normally problem number one. The students have difficulty figuring out on their own how to do it without watching the video. Number two is getting the hexadecimal color codes. <laughs> so these videos will help you figure out at least those two things. Everything else is pretty user friendly. Um, and then in terms of color, also for Linda this week is we're, we're going back to uh, Photoshop for web design, which all of these videos here with these Photoshop ones, what, what Justin's talking about, as you saw last week, working with color, does would apply to your use of GIMP. Or, or maybe other image editors that you're that you're working with um, this week in terms of bitmap images, and then with CSS, there's lots of stuff to choose from, and it really depends on your learning needs and what those elements are that you're wanting to include in your site. So if you're wanting to do stuff with CSS in terms of gradients, I have site I have information here. Probably the more popular one is everybody seems to want a horizontal drop-down menu. I have resources right here for CSS to do all of that with CSS in stylizing navigation with James Williamson. And then also page layouts. Um, now granted we're in week three of the course, it would be ideal if you would go ahead and get your whole site laid out. Um, whether that's feasible for you to do this week, it's really up to you. So maybe the page layout videos is something that you're going to want to come back to later. Um, but it's definitely something you're going to want to do with CSS. And it doesn't mean that once you get it set in your site that it's set in stone. I mean, definitely mention that to your partner. Hey, you know, I'm still working with this. What do you think? How do you think it is? What are some suggestions for improvement? But feel free to update any of this. You know, whether even you could come back and put some stuff in with gradients later. It isn't necessarily something that you have to do right now. These are just the videos that I'm referencing right now for you to watch. And I will not actually reference them again. But, um... Feel free to always go back into previous weeks and see which videos I represented, uh, referenced for different things. That's always an option. Now let's take a look at our major assignment this week in a little bit deeper, you know, depth than what I just basically barely presented to you just a minute ago. But basically, like I said, you uh, those elements that you presented to the class, your your ten elements that you're wanting to to do in your site that you've mentioned last week, you're choosing uh, one to two of those. Now definitely manage your learning. From weeks three through seven on uh, how many of these you want to get you don't necessarily have to work on um, all of them for your whole site and then even at the end of the course if you end up not even getting to one or two of them it's really up to you this is just last week you shared with us 10 that you're hoping for and we would all hope that you do it you are able to do those things and this week it would be ideal for you to choose one or two and start working on them and then give your client give your uh, partners a, send it to your partner so they can give you some feedback these could be web uh, elements in terms of CSS or other things that you're wanting to do, or they could be graphic design elements. Um, and then, so if you could get that started and shared with them uh, by Wednesday would be ideal, so that then they can give you spend time, give you feedback for the rest of the week. That would that would be good. But I I know that's probably a little difficult to get all of that in by Wednesday. So set up your learning with your partner. Um, talk talk with them about when you can get it into them to look at, and even if it kind of bleeds into the next week, that, that's fine. But the key is that you need to be working with someone, sharing your work with them, getting feedback. And then the following week, I'll switch it up, and you guys will all have new partners, and you'll go through the same thing again. Um, but to get full credit for this assignment, both you and your partner have to successfully do that. Now, if you have trouble working with your partner, please let me know. Um, but this week, 
it's which is which is odd but i am telling you that you need to for one of those two this could just be the only one that you do it's really up to you um, would be the use of putting uh, an image that you're hoping to use for your site on a home page and then developing a color palette from that image using cooler inside the course i have instructions on how to do that your lender resources are going to talk about how to do that as well but basically by the end of this assignment eventually you're going to basically have a zip of three to five pages um, all of these would be at the root level and then you're going to then have uh, an include folder which would at the at the root level or an include directory however you want to talk about it that would have your CSS that would be controlling your external CSS which would visually design your page using your cooler color palette and then you're also going to have uh, an images directory at the root level as well and inside the images directory you would at least have the one image that would be embedded on the on the the home page I've had some students at this point that already have their logo and they would have that one logo on in that images directory and then they would have that logo show up on all of the pages feel free to populate those pages with placeholder content and I give you a resource where you can go and get placeholder content which is basically just fake text that you can fill up a site with to kind of give you an idea of what the layout's going to look like with content in it um, so feel free to use those you don't necessarily have to have your content in it I've even had students who by the end of the course they're submitting their project and it doesn't have largely it really doesn't have a lot of real content in it that's fine you can use placeholder text for all of that because remember the whole purpose of this whole project is then at the end of the course you're finally going back to New York and you're saying you're just you're hoping that your site is going to be the one chosen by them to then then you would then leave and then go actually build them the real site with their real stuff because right now you don't really have their real content yet um, anyways uh, I hope this kind of makes sense and I hope that you guys are going to enjoy working with a partner because um, they can really help you you know like remember you saw this image before I'm really hoping they can help you you know push you know push you a little bit to get you more into that a or B range which is a great, normally where this this all falls but more importantly I'm hoping they can really help you think through some of the creative some of the creative aspects of, of the project as well because I know that you you have that those creative ideas but I'm hoping that through working with a partner you can get their creative spin on it as well as they might give you ideas so and as I finish all of my videos um, each week I would like to inspire you to be observant web users go out there observe the web uh, it'd be ideal if you're continuing to observe sites that you're hoping that your site is going to be like to be but then again you're also just out there consuming the web in general so um, every day you're seeing what works what doesn't work what looks really cool what doesn't look cool hopefully you're getting ideas for your own site or maybe you're making decisions on hitting the back button and going somewhere else and you're trying to figure out what is it that they did wrong why did I have to hit the back button and go somewhere else are the principles there that I can apply to the future sites that I develop. So definitely be an observant web user this week. Very key aspect of being a web designer. And then as always, let the class or I know if you have any questions. Feel free to share those in the in the general questions area. Have a good week.